Hi everyone, so today I'm going to talk about low carb diets. Low carb plecos comprises of around 1026 commonly described species with many more undescribed and they are exclusively found in South and Central America although invasive populations are found elsewhere of Teoplicthes and a few hypo, um, hypostomus. These species feed on a variety of diets but the majority feed on uh, uh, well, as uh, detritivores and algivores. To exist, though, with this diverse of species, they must be able to partition these niches, even within algivory um, and um, detritivory. But there are um, a few carnivorous species. Um, within hypostomia, there's very few. One of the examples would be this uh, scopinin cistrus. But there's some very distinctive carnivores within the subfamily Laurel Carne, such as this planet Locora cryptodon. These species that are carnivores seem to have elongated suction pads or fleshy parts of their mouths, and they seem to be able to manoeuvre around their food quite a lot more adaptable than other species, or even externally, we can see elongated tooth plates on the algivores, which increases with the diet strongly associated with herbivory compared to shorter um, tooth plates on those um, species that are associated maybe towards omnivory and carnivory um, and to the most extreme would be those carnivorous um, hypostomine um, which have very short tooth plates with very long, very sparse number of teeth. We can also maybe see this in other taxa as well but there's also, if we look at the spoon-shaped teeth of Panak for detritivory and getting into wood to feed on that, uh, the microbes and parts inside of that. Many of these fishes might feed in a rasping action, but other species might be able to manipulate their food further, such as um, species trying to get into maybe mollusks. So if we look at the diversity in low carde jaws, so we first got here, oh my god, so this is a barren cistrus zandella, so this is uh, what low cards are mostly known for, this is an algivore, this is feeding on algae, uh, bacteria films, stuff like that grows on the surfaces of rocks where they're found, and you can see it's got this large dentary uh, large dentary and premaxillary plates with many numerous teeth which is a sign of a sort of herbivorous diet. So if you get one of the most famous taxa and so it's the angle it's quite a long fish and it doesn't really fit under my camera. This is Tyroplicthes josiomanus. You can see here it's got so this is a detritivore so this is feeding on detritus which is stuff like um it's more of, I'd say it's almost like an omnivore, but not quite. It's going to feed on a lot of plant matter, um, algae, stuff like that. And you can see it's got sort of shorter, less numerous plates. Um, dentary, these are tooth plates, so this is a dentary, premaxillary. And you can see that it's also got a sharper angle. So maybe you could assume maybe that this fish is going more into crevices than this fish which has sort of a more rounded tooth base. They don't really look like teeth as we know it. Um, cameras don't pick them up too well. And then if we get something like another detritivore, so this is the best example I've got of a detritivore that feeds on wood. Well, feed, um, extracts its stuff from wood. So it's Panaculus albivermis. And if it's going to focus, what you can't see here is that while it looks very similar to this, it, um, to the Tyroplicthes, it does actually have spoon-shaped teeth. So that's for gnawing and getting into the wood to get that bacteria, the microbes and stuff like that. So almost these fish are all partitioning the sort of bacteria microbial diet into different aspects of it and even detritus the tyroplic these is a lot more adaptable as a detritus it's going to feed on a lot more um sort of a, a general more of a generalist diet it's a lot more adaptable in that way so this is what i'd say is a another example of something that's maybe all of these i'd say are more herbivorous but they it does have this sort of 
shorter jaws so maybe this one is more omnivorous this is paranthistus af arantiacus so not the true arantiacus but if you look at the jaws it is a lot shorter and less numerous teeth maybe more similar actually to Tyriplicti so maybe I would say more detritivores um, we don't entirely know as much about lower card diets and we're really just at the cusp of understanding them but we understand stuff like Tyrio um, sorry paranthistus sandellus this is the gold nugget um, this isn't a fully grown individual, but we know that these feed on lar large amounts of algae, bacteria and stuff, because that's what we find in their gut. Whereas these guys will feed a lot on the bacteria within, um, or microbes within wood, because that's what we find within them. And what they, these guys actually have a lot of studies on how they um, assimilate. Um, that bacteria, so, um, well, microbes, and I've already done a video on that. So let's go into something a bit more niche. So here we have, this is um, Leprocanthicus josemi. So this is a carnivore and look at the striking difference. So I've got another Leprocanthicus here. Um, look at the striking difference in jaw anatomy. There's very small tooth plates and only what, a few teeth in the premaxillary and very few in this um, uh, dentary. It does have a large, I find this is sort of characteristic of leprechaun because they are potentially um, very specialist with mollusks and sort of getting in at their food uh, like that. And you can see here that it's got um, quite a large lobe of this um, lower jaw suction cup. And that's probably for getting in and creating a lot of force. Um, they do also have little papillae there you can see they're known as um this is a different species i can't remember it's an l number but you can see how the jaws differ they actually sort of reach in so they're able as carnivores even if they're feeding on insects they're reaching in um they've got to have a lot more mobility i'd say and they're going to be going into crevices where those insects are hiding whereas a lot of microbes will be a lot more found in different places and i'd say when you get to the you can look at how or where these fish feed just by the position of the jaws. Tyrioplicthes having a higher angle, they're probably reaching into things or capable to. So this is a mummified fish, that is not blood, it looks like blood. It's actually in person, looks a bit yellowish but... Um, so, this, so this is just the anatomy of the inside, I can't remember the name of those bones. Uh, this is the calithrum or ankylithral so this is the pectoral girdle and then we have the pelvic girdle here which i think has been cut through looking at it as you know it can't have it's about there and you'll see it on all of these fish this pectoral girdle so that's allowing for movement of those pectoral fins um none of them are particularly skinny enough really to see um maybe if we stretch out this but i don't want to break it um oh but you can see already this diversity in um, jaw morphologies and you can see difference actually between what we think is a true carnivore or what is a true carnivore once it sort of and then if you compare that to sort of the mouth of something that gets called a carnivore or more omnivorous carnivorous i know the pansitious af or antiacus isn't the best example but they're actually nothing alike even hypensistrus looks nothing alike jaw anatomy wise to these leprocanthicus and you'll find scobinocistrus and pseudocanthicus actually look the same because they have these less numerous teeth um shorter jaw plates and it's interesting because the wide diversity of lower cards are detritivores and algivores. So you've got a lot of ones with jaws like this, jaws like this. Even within the same genera, um, you could get jaws like this. There's many incisors with jaws like this. Also, um, ketostoma or cheetostoma. And also, um, oh, what's it? Hypostomus. Hypostomus will show a wide variety of different jaw shapes. And that's just to partition those niches, to feed on a variety of things, because there's so many species found in the same area. They need to be able to survive, really. They need to be able to compete against each other without out-competing, almost, if you get what I mean. Otherwise, if they out-compete, or even technically if they compete, you're going to lose one. 
um, or you're gonna have they're gonna feed slightly differently whether it's times of day um, if you look at the shape it's where they're feeding these guys are feeding on the rocks uh, a lot of photosynthetic sorry that's the alcohol spewing out it's not anything else um, and so they're partitioning these niches even if, with the carnivores you're looking at a wide diversity of getting food in different places so they're not competing and they also some have the ability to be a bit more generalist say uh, Tereoplichthys, um, even uh, Panaclus there um, and even feed on things that you might not expect such as uh, plant matter they can do whether depends on the plant matter to the extent of the use of it but if we just just a quick note really looking at jaws and I would definitely say that diets high in insect or animal protein is not going to do a lot of good to anything but the true carnivores which is very few especially out of hypostomine. Um, they're not going to be able to process the bones, they're not going to be able to digest it well. Cereals are unlikely to be digested well even though they're herbivores. They're largely feeding on algae which are millions of years separated from land plants and very nutritionally different some aren't even related but anyway so that's just the sort of if we look at the jaws from the specimens which is always useful just because when you look at living thing it makes it a bit more difficult to see as you can see, Lord Carde shows a diversity of different jaw shapes and methods of getting into and at their food, which reflects how they produce such a wide diversity of species of different body shapes, different sizes, and, well, that they are one of the most amazing fishes, and we could compare them easily to the African cichlids. Um, with their diversity of feeding, what may be law cards being a lot more specialised compared to the majority of these Rift Valley stickers that are commonly used. Anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.